and welcome to um, our webinar. This is our webinar 22 or vlog 22. We're going to be talking about um, nature nuggets today. And just so you all know, we are recording this. So, um, you know, just just so you know, make yourselves look pretty. You know? <laughs> um, but we're so excited that you're all here. My name is Jen Much. I am the science coordinator at Santa Clara County Office of Education. And I'm Marie Bacher. I'm the director of environmental education and I run Walden West Outdoor School. So everybody, welcome. We're going to have you all maybe introduce yourselves real quick. So if you can, either in the chat or if you're wanting to talk and speak up a little bit, um, just you can unmute yourself and tell us who you are, or we can read it in the chat. Um, so who you are, uh, where you work, what you do, <laughs> um, and then also uh, what your nature name might be. Now, a lot of us um, who've been outdoor school enthusiasts have nature names and why you chose that. So I can share mine. Um, when I went to sixth grade outdoor school, many, many years ago, I won't tell you when, um, my nature name, and I meant to have my name tag, I still have my name tag, I was Moon Shadow. <clears throat> I still have Moon Shadow, because I love the moon, and that's why I chose it. And just a bonus was that there's a song called Moon Shadow, <laughs> so. And mine is pineapple, and because my father immigrated from the Philippines to the Hawaiian Islands and worked on Oahu on the pineapple fields, my nature name is pineapple. So anyone else want to share theirs? You can unmute yourself and share it or share it in the chat. Okay, don't, don't be shy. <laughs> Come on. Hello, everyone. I'm Regina Jordan. I'm the ELL coordinator in, for a rural district in Southern Oregon. And we are looking, we, last year we started doing a two week science uh, camp program with our ELL students. Yay. It went really, really well. And so I don't wanna see the fact that um, COVID is requiring some adjustments and that kind of program. So. And your nature name? I never got one. I don't think, you know, I think I'm going to have to earn one at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Ishani, uh, joining in from India. Uh, my nature name would be mountains because I climb in the Himalayas. Uh, and yeah, my work, uh, I teach a lot of outdoor curriculum at Knowles and Outward Bound. So uh, taking it uh, in distance learning is a task for me because we are used to doing it on field. So looking for insights. Excellent. Someone else? There are some people in the chat who are, are um, saying their nature names. So I don't know if, Jen, do you want to read some of them from the chat? I actually can't see the chat. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you're screen sharing. Okay, then. Let's... I am. We have, uh, we have Jeff, who's uh, from Walden West, and his nature name is Jellyfish. And we have John, AKA Crow from Walden West. We have Madeline, or is it Madeline? Madeline. From um, Walden West as well, edu edu or environmental, ugh, environmental mental education specialist at Walden West. And hers is, is it Trillium? Ooh. Is that what that is? And then Henry is Gecko. He's the overnight camp supervisor at Walden West. And then we have Anthea, who is a specialist at Walden West, and her, she's Ringtail. And Coulter, his nature name is California Gull. He's a substitute field instructor at Walden West. And we have Heather Wilhelm from Sunnyvale, and she's a science instructional coach and her nature name is Poppy, and she used to teach fourth grade. So. Awesome. Well, That's welcome. So, thank you, everybody, and welcome. And wow, I, I'm excited there's someone from India, part of our, our work, and out of state even. Awesome. 
So I'm gonna share the next slide and then I'm gonna let Marie share her screen. But we first wanted, so basically when we do these webinars, we provide you with three kind of tips or tools um, with helping you with your distance learning. And so the first um, one that we wanna share, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about it until, and then let Marie dive into it more, is called um, EEI. And it's the Education California Environmental Education Initiative. Um, and this has actually been around for quite a few years, but I just wanted to check in before we even dove into it, is how many, just give me a thumbs up or a, in the chat, how many have heard of EEI before? Okay. A couple are shaking kind of, uh, <laughs> a couple thumbs up, yes. All you Walden West folks better have heard of it, right? <laughs> Cool, okay. So um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna let Marie share her screen now and she's just gonna talk through um, basically what EEI is. And I'm just gonna tell you while she's getting her screen ready is that um, EEI has what's called the Environmental Principles and Concepts, which are the EPNCs, which are embedded now in California, at least in all three of three frameworks so far. So the science framework, the um, history social science framework, and the health framework. And the EPNCs will also be embedded in the new math framework. Um, it will be an ELA and it also will be an art. So if there's any way or if you are struggling, you know, if your teachers are struggling with just doing any kind of interdisciplinary uh, types of lessons, this is a wonderful tool and way to, to, for you to do it. So I'm going to let Marie go ahead and give you more about what EEI All right. is about. So this is the website for the EEI. There's about 40 science units and there's also some history and social studies units as well. Um, what's really great is they go from kindergarten all the way to high school. You can see there's seventh grade and goes all the way into, into high school, which is awesome. And um, these were written way before NGSS actually came out and then they realigned them to NGSS. Um, so the one that we're gonna just take a look at is the Changing States and Water and Natural Systems, which is um, a fifth, sixth grade, and it's uh, earth science. And what I really love about this is that uh, it has a lot of visuals. So this is a dictionary. So every single unit comes with a dictionary um, that is online that you can have the kids download if you're doing distance learning. Um, the other thing that it also has, it has these visuals too that are really color, colorful and the kids can take a look at them and you can see they're blank so that you can talk to them about it. Um, and they also have like a student, this is a student book. There's one that's fillable and there's also one that has, um, this one has the reading in it. And if you're in California, um, what's great about it is it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's all about California um, environmental um, informational things. And this one happens to be on the salt farming in the San Francisco Bay. So if you're here in the Bay, um, it has a really great article about it. Um, and it's at that reading level where the kids can um, read it and they can, and if it's their own, they can mark it up. Um, and so it just has some really um, good resources. Cause I know as a, when I was a classroom teacher, finding these kinds of resources that actually has the, the reading part is really important um, with really great pictures and everything. So, um, so definitely a, a place to take a look at um, resources here. There's also uh, word walls that they can also download. It's all fully colored. And, um, and I heard through the grapevine that they're working on a Spanish version as well. It's just not up yet. Um, so, you know, but this is a, a great resource. It's been around for a while and um, I think we forget that it's there. So, all right, next, I'm gonna stop sharing. All right, you're muted, Jen. <laughs> Same time. There you are. Sorry, trying to get to my back to the slides and I totally lost them right now. So sorry. <laughs> I was trying to find the link to the EEI um, 
uh, section. But anyway, all right. So, I'm not sure if you all can you see my screen? Not yet. Not, not yet. But while okay. she's getting that up, I did put a link for those of you who are in here. I put a link to the slide deck and the notes in the chat. And then also we have Maureen from Redwood Valley Outdoor Ed up in Mendocino County and Mother West, Mother West Wind is her name. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Um, so we would like you all to just reflect for a moment. Just, I know that was a very quick overview of EEI. And like um, we said, we shared the link in um, our notes that um, Jenna put in to the chat and that will be housed in our website also. But how do you see yourself using this resource in your distance learning? Um, what do you think, you know, just take a moment, I'll give you, I'll do some wait time. But um, just answering this question again, um, you can put your answer in the chat, but if you wanna also say something about it, that would be great too. So give yourself, give us about 30 seconds to think about it. And if you wanna share something in the chat or if anyone wants to unmute themselves and just share, maybe they've already used this resource somehow, um, how they see using it. So we have Pratibo who says, I've been using EEI in guided reading groups. Awesome. That's a perfect use for it. It looks like Drew raised his hand. So if you Drew, you can go ahead and share. Um, yeah, I was thinking that this could be used um, maybe after uh, a, a lesson you would do at a school, like for example, for, for me at Walden West, if I were to do like a day program at the school, this could be like a good follow up lesson to have for the teacher and kids um, once I have done some activities and done some outdoor explorations and discussions this might be a good follow-up uh, for the teacher to do after I've uh, kind of gone into the lesson with kids yeah I really like that I actually I used this back in the day when I was teaching elementary school and I taught third grade and that's a, kind of exactly what I did I did more hands-on things because there's not as much hands-on with EEI it's more you know, maps and readings and things, but I use that as the supplemental piece to, to get them to dive in a little more. So it's really nice. And we also have Regina. She says the EEI looks like a great place for me to start and adapt to the environment here in Southern Oregon. Awesome. Great. And then we also have Heather saying links through Google Classroom for independent learning. Yeah, lots of people are using Google Classroom. <laughs> That's right. So that's a great way to do that. All right. Thank you for sharing. And um, we're going to go on to our next um, tool or strategy. So I'm going to share the next slide and then, again, have um, Marie share her screen in a moment. We actually have two, two tools here. We did two, a two for one. <laughs> um, so hopefully some of you are familiar with um, what live webcams um, explore.org is a really great place for this. So again, because our students can't get outside as much or, you know, we want to get them outside obviously, but this could be a way to bring outside in. And then the STEM teaching tools, if you aren't familiar with them, oh my goodness, get familiar with them. They're amazing. Um, there's really great tools here to help you with all of your three dimensions of NGSS. And the focus that we're gonna to take today is just on the cross-cutting concepts and some prompts that you could use. So if you have looked at our link of our notes and you wanna look at the STEM, we didn't link it here, but we can in a minute. Um, but the STEM teaching tools, this is number 41, and it just gives some really good prompts for cross-cutting concepts. And then um, Marie's gonna share her screen. Hopefully we've got some action on a webcam and kind of talk through how you could use that tool for this. So um, last week when I was playing around and finding this tool, um, I was really stuck on watching for the baby condor be born. 
and it was hatched on Saturday. Um, so, but this is just, I just decided to stick with just California, but you can, you can look at all the live cams and you can see just in California, there's 22 of them and uh, the condor sanctuary is off season and, but there's also one that's a channel islands. That's a kelp forest. That's a live cam underwater. And there's a West end overlook and a hummingbird feeder. And we're actually going to take a look at the channel islands in a moment. And so there's plenty of uh, different live streams that you can have the students go look at. And so one that I have up here that maybe hopefully there's a baby there. Oh, there it is. And so there's a eagle. And I know because last time I looked, she had got, the mother or the parent had gone off to feed. So um, but there she is with her eaglets. I actually don't know if it's a he or she, but um, so it's on its eaglets there. And uh, so, you know, you can have students go and um, you can direct them, especially if you know, like this bird tends to feed around noon. I've already seen it like three or four times. So you can get the kids to go there and watch. And she tore apart last week uh, another bird and fed it to the baby eaglets. It was really fun to watch. Um, and then I also have the condor cam up because I said the baby has been hatched, but she's sitting on him right now. Um, so you can't see him, but you might, might want to look back and see when that one's happening. Um, if you can't find, a, um, there's plenty of footage here. If you can't find something live for the kids to watch, or let's say that you want to demonstrate something for them so that you can learn to use that tool with them, is there's, so I have a, oops, did I un, sorry, I unshared. I'm still learning this tool as well. And um, I clicked on the Alaskan wilderness because the brown bears of Katamai, Alaska um, has, let me share my screen again, I'm sorry. So while we're, I was thinking as we wait, what it, one of the things you can be doing with your cross-cutting concept questions is really thinking about um, having the students kind of hone in on, especially with the e eagle feeding the eaglet, like what is the structure and function of what, what the, how the eagle, eagle is doing that. So structure and function is definitely a strong um, cross-cutting concept. So the one I had picked actually was structured function. So thanks, Jen, for yep, no uh, doing that and um, using the STEM tool that um, we've kind of showed you, which is this next thing here. And these are prompts that you can use during instruction and in assessment. And it goes through, um, you can see all the different questions you can ask. Um, I think these would be great as well if we pare them down for parents to use with their students when they're outside. Uh, so this one's on, on patterns. And then the next one they have is like cause and effect. And you can see that they have follow-up questions after they observed a pattern. So uh, how do you know that uh, this caused that? So, you know, we can use those cause and effects based on, and they're pretty open-ended. So I think they, they can use in a, a multitude of uh, different um, areas. And so scale, proportion, and quantity. I'm trying to get to structure and function. Um, systems and system models. And energy and matter. Flows and cycles and conservation. And here's the structure and function one that I was going to focus on when you observe this tiny little clip of the bears. And so what I'd like you to focus on is what structures are present in the bears that you're observing? What function does each structure have um, in this particular scenario here? And do you think each structure, how does each structure behave? So let's just focus on that one because it's kind of large. And so when you watch this little video, I want you to take a moment to see what structures do you see? Um, and how are the, how are the, how do you think each structure behaves? So let's go back to, okay, nope, not the bear. Where's the little bear? There it is. It's just a minute that I've put aside here for you to watch to see the bear. I also put the questions in the chat just so you can see them while you're watching.
Okay, so now we're gonna open it up to you. And so what, what structures are present? What function does each structure have? And how do you think these structure, think each structure behaves? And you can go ahead and write that in the chat or raise your hand and Jennifer will help me because I can't see <laughs> what's in the chat. <laughs> we'll help you, of course. Or anyone that's raising their hand, I can't see that from because I'm sharing my screen. I'm good at wait time, so we'll wait till somebody's ready. <laughs> Do I just need to call on somebody? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, as we're waiting too, I want to just, one of the tips that we had on the slide is making sure doing what Marie just did, right? Have a backup plan if you're going to, we're going to discuss using webcams, but um, if you want to, you're trying to find something live, you might, you need to make sure you have something as a backup, so. Um, okay, so Drew wrote, um, I see family structure and it serves to help each other to survive. Excellent. How about physical structures? Anyone notice any? So Regina wrote, a long snout and sharp teeth to reach into the water to grab fish. Great. And bear up from uh, Maureen, bear adaptations as structures, strong muscles to hold upright in rushing water. Right, because uh, if I was standing in there, I'd be flown away already, <laughs> downstream. Floofy hair to help insulate them, right, because they're standing in cold, ice cold water. So, and structure, sharp teeth, function, catch fish. Very good. And Prabita um, put modeling to cubs. Great. So, so lots of behavioral and um, physical structures that we're talking about. So I can, I think you see how we can, how can you, because that's the next question, is for you to reflect and um, how would you be able to use this to engage students in, in this in phenomena? So again, think about that piece. Um, make sure if you want to share some ideas in the chat, that would be great. Or if you want to say say something out loud, that would be great. Um, and again, as I mentioned in a prior slide, uh, we did make sure make sure you have a backup plan because <laughs> you don't want to try to show. And and as something else that's add, an added bonus, I think, um, to this and watching webcams, it has a sort of a meditative type of aspect too. Um, I know when Marie and I were planning this, she just kind of kept watching the eaglets and just, it's like, hey, Marie, come on. <laughs> and I was the same way when I watched some of these. I just get into like a very comfortable, you know, just cool to see nature. So did anyone want to share some thoughts about how they could use a webcam or if they've used something different? So Drew says, I see a big, I see a big animal and it scares me. Probably helpful to ward off smaller predators. Oh. Um, and then Regina says, link to Google Classroom. Assign observation and questions. Can do as group discussion through video chat. A great idea. And I was also thinking that, you know, um, an easy way to, to at first engage students would be just to have them um, engage in a notice and wonder. Just mm -hmm. do the, web, the webcam and simply say, what are some things that you notice and what are some things that you wonder about? Because that just gives everybody access, right? Even if they don't really understand what structure is at first, that can help lead them to it. I like Oh, go ahead. Bob or uh, Big Brown Bat chiming in as well. Um, one thing that I was thinking is if it's not a set time, um, it's something that would be really relevant for students to notice different things at different times of the day and have them find patterns uh, along with 
time changes and things like that, or weather pat they could see if on cloudy days there's more activity or less activity, sunny days, things like that. That's a great idea because, um, like I told you, at noon is when that mother or eagle kept feeding her mother her babies, and then um, the only time I can see that baby condor is like early morning when the mother gets off of it and you know she goes off to eat and so you know it, there are certain times to use that tool um, to have them look and see if there are differences um, in activity because middle of the day you can see the mother condor is just laying there she just lays on top of that baby <laughs> so <laughs> and I want to point out too that patterns is also another cross-cutting concept so looking for patterns yeah. is really important did so I thought somebody else wanted to share yeah, I think Regina, did you have something to say? Um, I had, I lost my train of thought, <laughs> but um, I was thinking of, oh, that even if there isn't anything going on, if they're doing several observations, that nothing is something. Mm. That's true, yeah. And there are a couple more in the chat. So John says, live cams help connect students to what's happening right now, not something that was recorded earlier. And Ishani says, yeah, and also the surrounding are, are visible, so teaching interconnectedness would be easier. And Coulter says, that would encourage students to look at the webcams multiple times. And Ishani says, offers so much variety, doesn't limit us. Great. Right. That's really great. And, uh, you know, I had limited us just by looking at California because I got overwhelmed because there are a lot of cams, you know, in Africa and just all over the place. And so, um, you know, I think as a teacher, you need to focus your kids and decide where, where, what's your focus going to be? You know, mine happened to be structure and function. So that's, of course, where I went to was what was going to be the easiest for kids to see with me as I modeled that tool for them so that then they can go and we can pose those questions to them and then go off and explore the, those live camps. Great conversation. And we are running out of time already, but we're going to do the, the main thing we're here for. We're here for all of this. But I really am very excited to share this with you all. And you're, you have plenty of Walden West folks here on the, on the webinar as well. But i um, very excited, and, and Marie can talk more about this too, but um, Nature Nuggets is, is, has been launched. It was launched Earth Week, so last week. But um, do you want to talk a little bit about it before I show the little trailer? Or? Um, so basically we're doing a, our distance learning piece to help teachers out and what goes well with the structure and function in the live cams is our very first episode that Ringtail is here um, in this webinar and she's the main focus of it, um, which is the I uh, notice I wonder it reminds me of and so that's the the base lesson that starts from that you can have a lot of kids doing um, different I notice I wonder um, things. And then um, we also have a, a Monday meditation. So there's a take five so that um, kids can, and teachers can um, check that out for five minutes and, and do some meditation. Uh, Spider is doing a waste report. So he is teaching you all about um, different things that are happening um, when you, his first one's all about tracing your food back and he does a little song on with Chunky the monkey. And then um, we also have our nature nuggets. So I know our second one is gonna be launched here really soon. And it's things that kids can do with their parents as well. So not only can teachers use these, but parents are, are welcome to use these as well. And um, I know our second one is, is about uh, planting a garden. So helping kids you know, get outside in their own, if they have a yard to get outside and, and do that. Um, and then we also have some little slideshows as well. And also on our Facebook, we have um, pictures from Crow, who's also here, I think somewhere, um, mm -hmm. that uh, he's been putting up that he's taken pictures of different ones. I think this week was a uh, king snake. So, and then we've made slideshows out of each of those so that so kids who don't have Facebook can look at them on YouTube as well. 
Um, we also have an Instagram and we have a TikTok and our little banana slug on TikTok got a thousand views. So, you know, wow. that's <laughs> uh, awesome. I know a banana slug getting, but there's a lot of just fun things that we're trying to engage kids and we um, keep adding material every week. And so we're really super excited uh, to share all of, all of that. So. So with that, I'm not going to show the video because of timing, but yep. um, I, I will, you know, if you have something to add or would like to see something else, um, either from Walden West and some of the things they're doing with Nature Nuggets or something aligned to science instruction or outdoor learning, just please shoot us a little chat in the chat or shoot us an email. Um, the Walden West, um, and when you get to the slides, I know a couple of you asked for the slides, you will, those will be part of the notes as well and you can access them. And these are, I think I live linked this, I hope I did. So it'll take you right to the website for Walden West. Um, and like you said, I love, I've watched a couple of the TikToks and I love the Instagram and just gets me kind of excited about just seeing great photos of nature and the naturalists and all of you talking. Um, and oh, I, that's right. I have office hours. I keep forgetting. <laughs> if you do want to talk about science specifically, um, I do talk about, I do have office hours on Wednesdays from three to four. Um, again, you'll have access to these slides and then you'll have notes. I know Jenna sent those to you all and I forgot to put titles of our next webinars, but I believe now that you're registered and you're really wanting to learn more about just some content areas or how to support your students with distance learning, um, you can access all of our webinars through that registration link you got. So, um, so if there's anything else, if anyone has a question or want to just share something in the chat or some thoughts, um, if not, it's it's after 1.30 now. It's 1.33, so you are all, you're, you're allowed to go if you need to. <laughs> but if you want to stay and chat a minute or two longer, we're happy to stay and chat with you. So thanks all for coming, and we really appreciate you all being here. Yeah, thank you so much. And we made it to the end of week seven and shelter in place. Hey, show, show your social distancing hat. Oh, oh yes, we have my social distancing hat for my staff meeting. So <laughs> I've got my pineapples at the end. It's kind of long. So <laughs> all right. Love it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See y'all later. Mm -hmm.